Will Legendary Entertainment and Warner Brothers come to an agreement over the release of the 2021 movies on HBO Max? Hey, it's me AP and welcome to the Saturday Movie Show, the first edition of 2021. I hope you're all having a lovely Saturday today. It's a very cold one here in the UK, very cold indeed, but it won't stop me from presenting the Saturday Movie Show to you all. So I hope you all had a a lovely holiday season, a lovely new year as well. Uh, I had a quiet one. It was, I imagine a lot of people were the same. Just had a quiet Christmas, sat down, watched some movies, just had a chill really. Um, there was a lot of movies to watch over Christmas, new ones being released, like the likes of Wonder Woman and Soul. And there was uh, plenty of movies to catch up on as well, I suppose, for me personally. Anyway, I was kept watching a few different movies over Christmas and catching up on TV shows and stuff like that, so it was just a, a fun time to just chill out and sit back and, and watch some stuff on the screen, so I enjoyed it, and uh, I'm I'm looking forward to talking about all the topics on today's show. We got some news, as I said, about HBO Max and the releases of the Legendary and slash Warner Brothers movie releases. We've got some news of... Studio Ghibli, the upcoming movie release, and just want to talk about some of the, as I said, some of the movies I've been watching over the Christmas period, so let's let's crack on with the show. So, first of all, I want to speak about HBO Max and what's going on there with Legendary Entertainment and Warner Brothers. So basically, it has been reported by the Hollywood Reporter uh, this week that Warner Brothers and Legendary are nearing a deal for the release of Godzilla vs. Kong. And it does say that the negotiations are still ongoing in regards to the release of Dune. And basically, this I think this is, is good. First of all, it's positive, positive news. I want to see Dune and Godzilla vs. Kong on HBO Max. I, I think it is important for 2021 for movie releases to have them available to the public, the general public, on both both sets of releases. And when I say that, I mean either as a home release, so people can watch it at home via streaming, or people, if it is safe, they can go to the theatrical release and watch it in the cinema as well. So I think it's good. I'm glad that they've... It seems like they're coming to, to some sort of resolution on, on the release of these movies now, and I'm pretty sure... I can. I think this will happen. I, I think from reading what's been reported here, they're, they're discussing it. So if the d- discussions are going on, it's not been like a flat out no from Legendary. So I would hope now that we can hopefully see an end to this little disturbance in the force of movies and we can see the release of both Dune and Kong, uh, Godzilla vs. Kong in 2021. And... Um, I think it's going to be a good year for movies in general. I, I think it is going to be a better year just in the sense because we're going to see more movies be released this year. It's We know now what is ahead of us in regards to this pandemic. So looking at it now, we know what the obstacles are. We can, we can tackle those obstacles and release movies in the best possible way that can be released, that they can be released this year. Uh, so it will be interesting. I hope, like as I said, I hope that is the case that they do get this resolved and we do get to see some really cool movies here because there's no point in just having these movies go to theatrical if no one can get to the cinema. It just it makes no sense at all. And I, I get it that they should not have announced all this prior to maybe discussing this with Legendary. We don't know for sure whether there wasn't some sort of negotiation or talk beforehand uh, but it does seem like Warner Brothers did jump in and sort of announce a lot of these movies without asking people, first of all, to to say we're going to be doing this. And it was probably wrong. And I, I do think it is wrong. They should have they should have come to agreements with people, especially with Legendary, because they fronted a lot of the money for these movies. It was a joint project. It wasn't a sole Warner Brothers movie project. But look, they're resolving it, let's get the discussions going, let's get them finished, let's get these movies finalised for this year so we can all, as fans of movies, get excited and really just get excited to watch these movies. I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. So, 
I'm, I'm still, still, as you can see, I'm, I'm still terribly unprofessional this year, 2021. By the end of 2021, I am going to get super professional. Maybe we'll do some more editing on these videos, but for now, I'm going to have a coffee break, a coffee morning break. I'm on a black coffee for 2021. Black coffee is still in for me. I'm not going for tea or anything this year. It's still black coffee. So, another topic I want to discuss this year really is, as we mentioned, we mentioned Legendary and Warner Brothers and the movie releases. They are going to hopefully be going to HBO Max after all, but will streaming help the movie business this year in 2021? And I think it will. I, th I do think streaming is going to help the movie business. Now, I, th I talked about this a few minutes ago, about the obstacles that the pandemic presents to us all as humans, but also to the movie industry. Last year, it caused havoc on the movie industry. They didn't know what to do. Movies were delayed. They were delayed again. They were cancelled. They were postponed. You know the story. We all know the story of 2020. But 2021, as I said, we know what is ahead. We know now that the chances are if we open cinemas, they may close within a couple of weeks due to lockdowns, due to breakouts in the area of the virus. So now we know what is ahead. Streaming is the option for this year, and we see it now with Disney+. Plus. We see it more importantly with HBO Max and their announcement at the back end of last year that they're going to release all of the 2021 movies to HBO Max. And I think it is important because now we're hearing about movies now starting to film again. We're starting to see, hear about productions starting up and new productions starting up. But I don't think if we didn't have the, the, the opportunity to release movies straight away to streaming this year, we a lot of these movie productions on future movies would not be going ahead at this moment in time. I think a lot of it would be delayed until the back end of this year, just to find out where we're going with the year. But we because we've got the distribution, uh, the distribution of streaming services, and some potential money for the cost of what these movies are making, uh, go to making these movies. I think it's good for the movie industry. It's moving the industry. It is giving them the opportunity now to say, look, we can still release movies. And it may not be a theatrical release, what we originally attended, but we have the opportunity to go to a Netflix, go to a Disney Plus, go to a HBO Max and say, we want to we wanna release it with you guys. We want to put it out on your service. Amazon Prime Video, we want to put a movie out on your service. How can you help us budget-wise? And this will hopefully take out the big question marks over the future of the movie industry and releasing movies in the future and just give us all as fans of movies, you know, that positivity that we know that there's some sort of option for releasing movies. And streaming, for me, I think it is a good thing for 2021 anyway. It's definitely a good thing for 2021 movie releases. But I do think... Moving forward, I do think that on-demand and streaming services are certainly going to be so important over the next couple of years while we go through this pandemic for the next couple of years, most likely. And cinemas may fall, but streaming services will be there because, you know, a pandemic can't affect a streaming service. It's, it's not going to affect someone. If someone can sit at home and watch something... It's good for everyone. They can watch movies with it in their own leisure and they're not having to worry about going out to some cinema. So I think it is a good thing and I, I think it's a good thing for the movie industry in general for this year moving forward. So let's talk about some more news that, that has come out this week. As I said, I am, well, first of all, I'm a studio, studio Ghibli fan. I do like the movies. I started watching the movies a couple of years ago now. I started off with Spirited Away. And I've watched a few different ones, and I really enjoy them all. Spirits of the Way is my favourite, most certainly. I enjoy that movie. I think it's a, a cracking movie. Really love it. And uh, it's been announced this week by The Hollywood Reporter that Studio Ghibli's upcoming release, The Ear Earwig and the Witch, what a title, what a movie title, it gets a theatrical and, and streaming release date. 
for this year. So it will be released on HBO Max for US residents and hopefully we'll get more releases on on-demand services across the rest of the world as well. But it will be released this year and we're looking at February it will be released on HBO Max and it will be released on theatrical on the 3rd of February. So it's the 3rd of February for the theatrical release and the 5th of February for streaming HBO Max release. And that is the English dub and the original Japanese version of that. I watched the trailer today. I've watched it previously, the trailer, and it is a lot different to your normal Studio Ghibli releases. It is a different style of animation, first of all. You know, we, we always look at Studio Ghibli and it's just a very, you know, it's your cartoon animation but this one is a different a step in a different direction for Studio Ghibli. They are releasing this this piece, this this movie will be more of like a digital animation, more in line with like a Pixar movie. So I don't know. I'm not really overly keen on the animation, but I do like Studio Ghibli stuff. So I'm looking forward to the movie. It's just interesting to see what what's to come of it. I think it'll be just interesting to see if it's it, it kind of looks more like a like a western type story rather than a story that would originate in a in J in Japan whereas like a spirited away it feels like that sort of like that manga japanese style of storytelling whereas this one by the trailer it just looks a bit more um like something that would be released by like a pixar or, or any other like a dreamworks one of those companies but yeah, I, I don't know. I'm going to watch it. I'm, I'm Again, I'm excited to see what it's like. And um, so we th that is the news we've got of that one. So uh, let's let's see what happens. It's not long to go. We've got about a month to wait till, or less than a month anyway. Now it's till the next Studio Ghibli release. And it's been four years since the release of the last Studio Ghibli movie. So four years, it's a long time. So they've obviously been a lot of time on this project so hopefully it will be very magical and very cool release to watch so let's talk about what i've been watching over the holiday season so i have been watching a few different movies and i think one a notable movie i'm going to talk about is wonder, Bo wonder woman 1984 so what did i think of it I enjoyed the movie. I enjoyed it. I, I thought it was a really good movie and I enjoyed the first Wonder Woman movie. I like this one. I like anything that's set in the 80s. I didn't feel like it was like 80s in your face and I, 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 I thought it was done well. I thought it did the 80s well in this movie. As I said, it wasn't like over the top in my mind. Uh, I've heard a lot of comparisons about the old Superman movies, it was very reminiscent of them, the started movie at least, in the, the mall scenes, and I, I, I couldn't understand that comparison. I can also understand the critical reception of this movie. I know it's a very diverse movie, a lot of people uh, don't like it by the, looks of, by the looks of these reviews on like Rotten Tomatoes, and um, I don't know, I, I, I can understand why people don't like it, I can understand some of the, the treads of the story. Some people saying like Maxwell Lord's character, it's all a bit flawed, the whole thing with the wishes and her losing the powers and, you know, Steve Trevor coming back and and just to say, spoilers now, if you've not watched Wonder Woman by now, I, I don't know what to say. I'm I'm not going to give spoiler warnings. It was out a few weeks ago now. If you've not watched it, that's I do apologise, but surely if you're a fan of that movie, you would have watched it by now. Um... Yeah, I liked it, and as I said, like the thing with Steve Trevor, like him coming back, but he's not really there. She's just seeing or imagining his face on this other guy's body. Yeah, there's some bits that are a bit, bit not great, but I, I overall I liked it, and even after hearing like hearing the criticism, I always like I'll watch a movie and then I'll hear criticism, and then I'll look back at the movie slightly different than I initially uh, forced, first seeing it. And then I think about the the movie. I, I had this a lot with like the Last Jedi and the Rise of Skywalker. And since then, I've watched them back and looked back at them. And then I can understand people's opinions more. And uh, with this one, maybe maybe I have to watch it a few more times. And maybe after a few more watches, I'll be like, ah, oh, maybe it's not actually that good of a movie. But I, I don't think it was like the world's best movie in the world. But 
I think it was just a, a decent movie to watch, especially over the Christmas period. I enjoyed it. I thought it was a decent uh, superhero movie. It was better than Iron Man 3, so that's always a good thing for me. And uh, yeah, I, I liked it. Uh, another thing I've been watching over Christmas on Amazon Prime, I've been watching uh, Jack Ryan, the Jack Ryan series with John Krasinski, the guy from The Office, who played Jim in The Office, and I absolutely really enjoy that series. I think it's a cracking series. I'm through season one at the moment. Watched all that. I'm on season two now. It's a cracking series. I really I enjoyed the the Jack Ryan movie a few years ago with Chris Pine, and I thought that was a fantastic movie. And but this TV show is is phenomenal. If you're into sort of the I suppose what what would you say like army CIA type shows. There's a show I used to like what was released in the UK years ago, and it was called Ultimate Force, and it was like the SAS, and it was. I suppose it was like a similar type of thing. I just I really enjoyed it and it reminded me a lot of some of the stuff in that. And yeah, I thought it was a great show and I'm really enjoying season two at the moment. So uh, if you're looking for something to watch, definitely watch that. I caught a bit of Soul over Christmas, but I've not watched all of that as of yet. And yeah, but like I said, Wonder Woman, definitely, if you've not watched that as of yet, definitely check it out. And if you heard some spoilers from me today, it, well, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. But yeah, definitely check it out. Definitely check it out. So they're the movies I've been watching over Christmas. So it is time for something on the Saturday Movie Show. I hope you're all ready. It is time for the Saturday Movie Show quiz. The weekly quiz. And today's quiz is sponsored by nobody. But if you want to sponsor the quiz in the future, maybe just give me a, drop me an email or drop me an Instagram message and you could be a sponsor for the quiz. But yeah, let's go with the movie quiz. Let's crack on. So I'm going to give six questions, movie-related questions. And basically, I will go through all the questions, and then I will go through them all again and give you the answers. You don't need a pen and paper. You can just shout out the answers, and then we can just go from there. And let me know in the comments below how many answers you got right and what questions you got right. Or just let me know, let me know all your answers and tell me which ones you got wrong or what choices you thought the answers were. So let's crack on with the quiz. Question number one. Who played the lead role of Willy Wonka in the Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory movie? Let's go for that number one again. Who played the lead role of Willy Wonka in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory? This is the original movie, not the Johnny Depp movie. Right, question number two. What year was Spirited Away released? So number two again, what year was Spirited Away released? This is a Studio Ghibli movie. And there's three cho choices. It's either 2001, 2002, or 2003. Question number three. Who created the Lethal Weapon movie franchise? Question number three again. Who created the Lethal Weapon movie franchise? Question number four. Who directed the 2018 Aquaman movie? Question number four again. Who directed the 2018 Aquaman movie? Question number five. What book is Blade Runner based on? So question number five again. What book is the movie Blade Runner based on? Question number six. What was the second Pixar movie to be released by Pixar? Question number six again. What was the second Pixar movie to be released by Pixar? Which was the second release that Pixar made in the movie list. So let's crack on with the questions and answers. So question number one, who played the lead role of Willy Wonka in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory? The answer to that question is Gene Wilder. Question number two, what, was, what year was Spirited Away released? It was either 2001, 2002, or 2003. The answer is, 2001. 
Question number three. Who created the Lethal Weapon movie franchise? The answer to that is Shane Black. Question number four. Who directed the 2018 Aquaman movie? The answer to that question is director James Wan. Question number five. What book is the Blade Runner movie based on? Now, the book the Blade Runner movie is based on is Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? Whoa. Thank God they went for Blade Runner for the title Blade Runner. Question number six. What was the second Pixar movie to be released by Pixar? And the answer to that question is A Bug's Life. And that was released in 1998. The first movie by Pixar was Toy Story. So I hope you enjoyed the quiz. Let me know your answers below. I hope you've enjoyed today's Saturday movie show. Give me some suggestions what you want to see on the show this year. Let me know what topics you want to see me tackle and any segments you want to see happen as well. And let me know if you enjoyed today's show. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you all have a great Saturday. Have a good one. Thank you.